Rebound! Hello and welcome to Wayne Hills Patriot Stadium. My name is Dylan Orr King here with Matthew Cass today. Soon to be joined by Luca Yanuzzi with the great guitar solo there. And currently, Wayne Hills will be taking up Fairlawn in a, this playoff matchup. And this is looking to be a great game, Matt. What do you think? Well, I mean, definitely with the Hills uh, soccer team here, definitely trying to continue here and win this match. We see how aggressive they can play, how well their defense is going to stack up, and of course, offense is the most important aspect in scoring any goals and winning. Well, you know, when talking about the team, I actually got the chance to talk to uh, head coach Ray Berger and assistant head coach uh, Miss Camano, and they pretty much said the almost the same thing, but along the lines of that this is going to be a really hard matchup, and they're basically both teams are very similar in many different ways, and that Hills are really going to need to fight for this win. Well, yeah, I agree, and uh, I think as the last time they played them, they had won two to one, and so definitely a hard battle and not a high-scoring game, but definitely a battle nonetheless. And actually coming up here is Luca Yanuzzi, who, who he himself was the one who was playing the guitar there and, you know, did a pretty good job, I'll say that. Man, thank you, man. It's fun out there, getting out there, just playing and doing what I love. It's a lot of fun. Absolutely, and... Uh, as we're going on, let's look at the past matchup that Hills had against Fairlawn, where they came out the victors, 2-1. to one. So, pretty good start for them, but let's see if they can repeat. And, you know, looking at a repeat, do you think that they would be able to put to pull one out here? Um, Pretty much from what I've been seeing for their practices on the field, they definitely are looking for one, of course. And from what I've been seeing, their with their skill, they could put out one today. Well, we'll hope that that does become true and that they are able to put out a repeat just take off that one for Fairlawn how about that let's make it a 2-0 win how about that but Fairlawn now coming onto the field we can see Hills' lineup looks like two strikers four in the back and three midfielders so a 4-3-2 formation looks like it and also by the way their goalkeeper or at least their starting goalkeeper will actually be out for this game due to a illness, and Laura Lassen will be stepping in as the backup goalkeeper. So do uh, you think that's going to affect this game at all, maybe? Well, personally, from the game that I've done prior with this Wayne Hills team, we didn't get to, we didn't get to see Laura Lassen, but seeing her out on the, on the field doing these drills, she's pretty much just the same, and as long as we have someone who is anywhere close to a decent goalkeeper in the net, we should be able to keep it, keep everything out of there. Well, let's hope that's the case. Game going to get started here any second. There's the opening whistle. Ball immediately passed out to the right side of the field. Very quickly taken away by Hills. Tries to send the ball down the left side of the field. Just going to roll straight out of bounds. A very aggressive start as it should be too by both teams. Throw in possession goes to Hills. But Fairlawn able to respond fairly quickly. Has a very early play. But a good stop by the goalkeeper. Great job. And uh, as you saw, through ball coming through, obviously it's going to be trouble, but goalkeeper stepped up and cleared it right out of there. Here's a throw in. Hills defense all over the ball. And some pretty good passing to send it down into the middle of the field. Clearing it down the left side. Possession given straight back to Hills. Could get a good cross in here. Almost able to connect on the cross, but just a little bit too far wide. 
Fairlawn with the possession of the ball now. Hill's able to regain possession, but ball will be sent out of bounds on their left side. So looking back yesterday, we saw the men's Wayne Hills soccer team take on their opponents, and they actually came out with the win that game. And, Luca, you called that. So how about you tell us a little bit about that game? Well, that game, pretty much the first half was going back and forth until the very end of it, where Hills had an incredible opportunity Sorry to cut you off there, Luca, but it turns out Fairlawn was able to run down the field on the right side and able to score a pretty easy goal there. Yeah. Looks like a almost a defensive just breakdown almost. Yeah, it looks like that Hills defense just crumbled, didn't know where they were going or who to cover, and just lost where the ball was and Fairlawn able to put it in. But last game, Hills men's soccer team beat Passaic Valley 1-0. And that goal came in the second half of play by Matt Moran. And an incredible goal at that went right off the bottom of the crossbar and right in. Well, with Fairlawn going up 1-0 now, let's see if Hills can turn this game around. Seems the corner flag fell over here. Very strong <laughs> and breezy winds. Well, you know, it's, it's a 50-degree day today. Skies are clear, but the wind, 10 miles per hour. So that's definitely going to affect the ball's traje trajectory at the least. Definitely not ideal, especially with the clothing and attire. Goal kick taken down the right side. Some good passing by Fairlawn, but Hill is able to recover. Fairlawn recovers the ball in the middle of the field. Good pass down the left side, looking for the cross. And that'll be a corner for Hills. A very decent shot, and Hills definitely coming in the way of the passing of Fairlawn and disrupting a great deal, but just trying to connect and... Actually does not look like a corner here, my mistake. It is actually a goal kick. Goal kick down the right side. Fairlawn recovers. Not so great passes down the middle, but Hills is able to recover. Some excellent skills to get past the defender there. Gets the cross in. And just not. Actually looks like a substitution here as Emma Lombardi comes off. But the cross there almost looked like it was stopped by the wind. So not going to get that much momentum going forward. Especially if they keep trying to attack that side of the field. And a great run on the right side by Fairlawn. Brings it out back towards the middle. Some quick volleys there between the only two players. <laughs> Well, you know what? Quick thinking sometimes can win games, Matt. Very true. But we've seen it now twice, actually, how Fairlawn is just able to speed down right the right side of the field and is just able to get into a quick position to be able to turn it over and score. Fairlawn sending it down, just not able to chase the ball down, but Hills does send it out of bounds. Position will go back to Fairlawn. Here's the throw in for Fairlawn. Really good high toss there, right into the box. But Hills is going to come down with it. Some good skills to get past the midfielder. Great moves going straight down the field. And the march keeps continuing. Well, I mean, a great pass. And 
Fail on defense, just able to get rid of it. And you know, it really does so the similarities between this, these teams. Fairlawn running it down the right side with such speed and Hills doing the exact same. If anything, I have a feeling this is good, less going to be a battle between midfields as we saw in previous games. This is going to be a battle of the wingers. Definitely, I agree. And we can see the aggressiveness by both teams both jetting in between each pass of the other and j jumbling everything up and trying to get in possession of this ball. A good cross. Fairlawn able to get rid of it. Some nice skills there. But just not able to retain it. Hill's looking for the breakaway. Has a winger on the outside. Takes a shot. Hill's looking for another chance here. Takes a shot. And is able to hit the upper crossbar. Not quite the right sport, <laughs> but definitely the effort there. Well, you know, I mean, if we were playing football, if it were just a little bit higher, would have been an extra point or even a field goal, but just not the right sport. Here's the goal kick. And you see that kick trying to go towards the middle of the field, but the wind is just pushing it straight over to the right side. And I'm going to be completely honest. I don't think they have a problem with that, especially since they've just been attacking from this right side pretty much the entire game. Cross towards the middle. Goalkeeper able to get to it first. Little bit of strength there to get past the Hills midfielder. With Hills defense able to catch up to it. Decent pass gets cut out. And some nice skills. Sweet trick. To get past the midfielder and again. Takes a shot. Not able to stop it, but the ball is not stopped. Those players trying to keep it in, but it will go out for a corner. And man, were those some sweet skills that we saw very, very right in the interesting of the play. field. And that's number 12, Mercer Kachidi. Taking the corner. Good stop by the goalkeeper. Doesn't get picked up, though. Fairlawn defense being super aggressive. Taking another attempt, but just gets picked up by the goalkeeper. There's very well coordination there between the girls and the side here. All that passing was very clean and crisp and just, again, picked up by the goalkeeper. Hills down the left side. A nice pass. Tries to cross it towards the middle. That's going to be called. An unfortunate offsides. And Luca, currently, what do you think that Hills needs to do to put a score on the board? Well, Hills, one thing they definitely need to do is keep that ball within will keep the ball outside of their territory and keep it within the territory of Fairlawn as long as you keep it there eventually that ball will end up in the back of the net well you know one of the good things about this Wayne Hills girls team is that they're extremely consistent is that they can just keep attacking the ball over and over and over again and sure maybe last what five minutes they might get tired but honestly, they're able to keep it pretty consistent over time, and let's see if that's able to break this Fairlawn team. 
Marissa Kachidi with the ball. Not able to dribble past the Fairlawn defender. <laughs> Fairlawn almost had an attempt to attack there, but just not able to get to the ball in time. It's out for a fair long throw in. And currently Hills, unfortunately the exact opposite of what you were saying, Luca, which now the ball is back in their own territory. There's the whistle. Ball will go back to Hills. Go kick straight down the middle. Tries to set something up on the left side, but just nobody there to be able to get control of the ball. Hill's able to recover. Marching down the middle of the field. Towards the middle. Kachidi. Good pass out to the left. Able to dribble past some defenders. And that's going to be deflected for a corner. There's some fast action here, and again, trying to get open. And this defense for Fairlawn is just not allowing anything to come through. And another substitution on for Hills. Here's the corner. Deflected away, rolling out. Doesn't go out of bounds, but. This is going to be blown for that foul. Ball rolls straight out of bounds yet again. But it's going to be a hill throwing this time. Hills throw in. Ends up in Fairlawn's possession. Fairlawn now pushing down the center of the field. They have a breakaway. Might be able to score again here. And is able to score for the second time today. So two on the board already for Fairlawn. This is almost the exact opposite of what we saw last time Hills played Fairlawn, where Fairlawn goes up two. And now Hills needs two goals just to tie the game. Punted down the middle. Hills retains possession. Sent out of bounds on the tackle. And it'll be a fair long throw in. Speed on the side of Fairlawn. But the whistle will be blown. <laughs> Off of a foul tackle there. 
Hills will get the free kick. Free kick rolls out of bounds. Fairlawn will get the throw in. Fairlawn gains possession. Looking for a play. Solid defending there by Hills. Punted down the left side of the field. Hills regains possession here. Solid passing down the midfield. Tries to set up a play. And Brooke Alexander, number four, just not able to get there in time. As Fairlawn will get a goal kick. Hills regains possession. Tries to set it up in the middle. Had a slight opening, but Fairlawn goalkeeper just able to wrap up the ball. Natalia Aliota on the header. But Fairlawn has a breakaway yet again. Could score again. But the Hills goalkeeper able to wrap it up just in time. And Hills is able to keep it out of bounds. Now it's Hills on the breakaway, possibly. Takes a shot. Gets wrapped up, but decent that Hills is now trying to take chances at goal here. Well, definitely Hills showing the aggressiveness, but Fairlawn definitely coming out on top with the speed. And as we've seen, these breakaways just keep happening over and over again. Well, it's just that Fairlawn keeps finding the holes, and they just, they're able to rush through them extremely fast and get straight past those defenders, and it's really putting their team at a disadvantage at this point. It looks like it's going to be blown there. See, it will be a handball. Here's the free kick. Decently taken with Hills trying to keep possession here. A good box out there. Able to keep the Fairlawn defender out. Here's the breakaway. Tries to take a chip shot across the goal, but just Brooke Alexander not able to score there. Hell yeah, the Hills defender, um, excuse me, offender there. How could I say that? <laughs> Striker, may I put it. Sorry. Um, definitely just couldn't get in position to score the goal there and just went wide. Well, very unfortunate there. And, you know, she's been one of the key players of this team, a high goal scorer for this team during the regular season. And if she's able to put one up on the board, then she could really help this team out or just almost anybody at this point. Almost had another breakaway there, but Hill's defender able to stop it pretty well.
Ball rolls out of bounds. As Amanda Adamo just not able to keep it in. Here's the throw in Fairlawn. Hill's defender gets to it first. Clears it out of bounds. Here's the throw in. And there will be the foul. Hills will take the free kick. Hills actually able to recover here in a pretty good position. Sends it over to Brooke Alexander on the left. Tries to get a good cross here, but the wind and strength of the kick just sent it sailing straight out of bounds for a goal kick. Hills recovers in a pretty good position here. Sends it time towards the middle. Almost had another shot at a goal, and yet again hits the wrong crossbar. Well, hey, maybe maybe they do think it's football. I don't know. Hey, well, you know what? At this point, you know, there is a girl on the Wayne Hills football team. They might be accepting applications at this point, but definitely not what Hills is looking for. Sent out of bounds for a fair long free throw. And 17 minutes left on the clock. Hills still down two to nothing. Hills defender gets pegged in the face there. It was just trying to look for a push, but Fairlawn is responding with almost equal aggressiveness. Fairlawn will get the throw in here. And they're looking for another breakaway to make this game 3-0, but... Could be called for a handball there, but ref isn't going to call it. Hills player clears it out of the box. And Hills just trying to push it down the left side of the field. Unfortunately, the push is going to end there with Fairlawn having the throw in. I just mean to add, I don't know if it were by chance of the wind or just by sheer strength that Fairlawn player throwing it in earlier down by Hillside. Quite a throw. I don't even know if I can make that one myself. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you almost have to give it up to the wind. I mean, you can even look at the uh, United States flag hanging over the Patriots scoreboard, and you can see... It is waving, and even just looking at the trees here, just blowing in the wind. Is I mean, today's a clear day. It's a windy day, and the ball is going to be affected by that no matter what. Hills gains possession here, looking to start something down the left side of the field. 
Chips it back into the middle. Hill's still trying to start something down the left side of the field. Sent out of bounds. Hills will get the throw in. And I really hate to put it this way, but at this point, Fairlawn is playing like the team Hills should be playing as. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, we had we spoke to both the coaches. There's the cross. Gets picked up immediately by the Fairlawn goalkeeper, but you know, you hate to make that comparison that Hills should be playing just as good as their opponent, but I mean you know, spoke to Coach Ragberger, and these teams are very similar. And if these teams are so similar, then it should be tied at 2-2 right now and not Fairlawn up by two. Really good free kick there. Some great effort there. Yeah. Really muscling it away. <laughs> and also and then immediately gets hit. Player. <laughs> Letcher is taking one for the team, but... Too literal. Yeah, exactly. But Hills does retain possession. Looking for an open pass. Kachidi setting up the... Run up for the right side of the field. Skills are past one defender, taking a shot. And a roller straight down to the goalkeeper. Definitely the placement there, but the power behind it, maybe a little more. Yeah, well, there's always next time. And Bill's most likely going to regain possession as the ball rolls out. And Hills isn't short on attempts either. I mean, yeah, they've been down on Fairlawn's side of the field for a lot of this game, and it's just been back and forth. And really this game is coming down to not only which side or which team's wingers can really pull off a miracle, but also it's coming down to which team can counterattack the best out of these two. Definitely, I have to agree with you. It's just been back and forth and very, very much aggressive, I should say. And a cross by Hills ends up going straight into the hands of the Fairlawn goalkeeper. And Hills trying to set up the right side of the field now. Touch taken a little bit too far. And Fairlawn is able to clear it out of bounds. Some good ball movement there too. actually get pa gets past the Hills player and the Fairlawn player and gets sent out of bounds yet again. This is Hills' third free or throw in. Hills defense pushed up really far here. They're being very aggressive. And they have to be. They're trying to get a score on this board here. Exactly, as Hills tries to set something up on the right side of the field, just not able to get anything done. And a lot of substitutions coming in for Hills. Number three, Abigail Waltman coming off. Looks like number 19, Mia Lombardi, taking up the striker position. And a good setup on the right side for Hills. Takes a shot. Sent away by the goalkeeper, but a header. Met by defender. Another shot. Another defender. And finally, Hills is able to put one in. The score is now 2-1. And what a team effort at that for that whole goal. I feel like everyone on the team got a touch on it. <laughs> Almost. I mean, three shots on goal, but one goes in. That's all you need. 
And now the score, 2-1. Fairlawn's still in the lead, but Hills only needing one more to tie the game back up. With 9 minutes 51 seconds left on the clock, we sure can see that happen. But now we'll get to see if Fairlawn can go on the counterattack. It looks like they are. Fairlawn running it down the right side. Gets a pass in the middle. Picked up by Laura Lassen, our backup goalkeeper. And a very good stop there. I was going to say. Much of the ball being played in the air right now. It's just stuck on the sideline. Well, now the ball is moving more towards the middle. Gets crossed over to the middle of the field. Heavy tackle there by Fairlawn. And there's the whistle for a Fairlawn free kick. Natalia Aliota able to get a foot on the landing free kick. And now it's Amanda Adamo running down the right side of the field. Crossing it over to Mia Lombardi. Connects with the face of the uh, Fairlawn defender. It's a war out here. Well, so far in this game, I think we've seen about, what, five, six times where the ball's immediately connected with the face of another player? Definitely. And not to add, not to mention teammates. Oh, yeah, of course. I'm just taking that kick straight yeah. to the midsection. Yeah, but some really good passes out here from both teams just fighting over and over and over again over possession. You know, one team doesn't want Hills to score. The other team want Hills to score. <laughs> Finally falling on the ball there. A little slippery, I guess. Yeah, just not able to get a good hand on it. Goes straight to Hills. That attempted cross is going to go straight out of bounds. It, it'll be a Hills throw in. It's some good stopping and starting there. We've seen it about probably three times now. And the whistle is going to be blown. It's going to be a Hills free kick in a very good position here. If only it were on the other side of the field, they might actually have the wind blowing towards their side, but this is blowing away from the wind. So if enough power isn't put onto it, it's not going to be a very good cross. A lot of power put behind it. Hills has an opportunity and scores! Hills ties the game up. Great succession, too. And Both goals coming at the end of 10 minutes. The score all tied up 2 2. Another substitution for Hills. But almost the first. How long would you say? I'd say about. 20 minutes maybe of the game maybe probably more Hills was on the downside and then as soon as 10 minutes hits all of a sudden Hills scores one goal and now at around 5 minutes 55 seconds I believe is when they scored their second goal to tie up the game 
it's all in the momentum change. I mean, after that first goal, you can definitely see they were marching down the field on Fairlawn's territory a lot more stronger and a lot more faster. Well, Hills was playing a lot more aggressive. I mean, they were taking a lot more opportunities. They were a lot better at passing, a lot better crossing, some key substitutions, and all of a sudden, game's tied up. Ooh, a miss there by the Hills defender. Hills recovers, takes the ball on the right side, and now I just got to ask, at least from a team state of now that the game is back to being tied if you're hills do you speed up or do you slow down well, i'd say there's no doubt about speeding up and you just have to come stronger and harder i mean that's it definitely keep adding on before this half is up well i definitely don't argue that that i mean hills needs to come out here with a win but the one argument i would say about possibly slowing down the game is that maybe they can take it and turn it into a more of a team passing based game where now it's going to rely a lot more on skill than instead of speed that is very understandable and I do agree with you on that but as I was saying it's no time to play defense yet Luca what do you think do you think that Hill should slow down or speed up well I say now that they've just tied the game up I say they keep the momentum going and try and speed it up not to go too fast, but to definitely keep it sped up to a point where they can score a goal again and take the lead. And once they take that lead, they can slow down a bit more and play more defense and hope that they can keep the Fairlawn team to scoring and tying it up again. Well, I think that proves it, that all three of us can never agree on what a team should be able to do <laughs> at that current <laughs> moment. But Well, I will agree with Luca there saying yes do need to speed it up, but along with the speed comes control, and I think that's what we did see coming to the the last five minutes here, or actually I should say maybe 15 minutes of more control. As Hills came out with a lot of aggressiveness and uh, speed, I feel like the more control they had, as we saw, they connected and were able to put two points on the board and tie it up. Well, I think they pretty much just looked at their own team and looked at Fairlawn and what they were doing and said, you know, we can do the exact same thing. Why don't we? And then they attempted it and then they put two points up on the board so I think you don't fix what ain't broken or if it is broken then you fix it so looks like they fixed whatever problems they've had and were able to come back in this game now Hill is setting up excellent passing out here absolutely and there's another one right there B. Lombardi able to recover Goalkeeper able to grab it. Fairlawn is able to recover, and but Hills immediately takes away in the midfield. Looks like a foul will be called. Hills will get a free kick. Let's see what Hills is able to do here. They do have a semi-good position. They can make a lot out of this. Deflected for out of bounds. It'll be a Hills corner. As you keep seeing, the momentum is still in Hills' favor. Definitely trying to add more and before this half is over. And I mean, with this corner, we really could see Hills start to show out in a good fashion but last minute ticked off game half now only in seconds a decent header goes out of bounds now it's Fairlawn making a substitution but only 40 seconds left on the clock 
Not going to change much. Fairlawn trying to push down, but actually is able to get the ball on the left side. Whistles are going to be blown. Ten seconds left on the clock. Doesn't seem like they're going to get this cross off. At least not in time. And there it is. Not able to get the free kick off in time. And that'll be the end of the half. And so now, Hill is able to bring it back in the last 10 minutes of the first half, <coughs> making the score 2-2. Two to two. So, Matt, break it down for us. How was Hills able to do it? Well, what I can tell you is um, definitely how both teams started off. They came out aggressive, as I've been saying, and uh, they, they showed they can play. But I feel like very from the start, Fairlawn came out and had the control. And as I did mention, Hills gained that control and realized they did have the control and the skill to get up there and score and tie this game up as it was originally 2 nothing and now tied at 2-2. And uh, one player I would like to point out is that I saw, in my opinion, was Natalia Aliota. And always playing around midfield, playing very aggressive, and as you can see, a lot of skill and trying to, being a playmaker really for this team and setting all these good shots and good possessions up. And uh, as you can see, as everyone connected better and better by the end of the first half, and here we are, two to two. Yeah, absolutely. And Luca, now if you're Hills, what do you need to do to make this tie into a positive game maybe score a goal coming into the next half well again like what Matt said it's not as much about going aggressively it's about going with control if Hills is able to keep that control and move that ball up out into Fairlawn territory then they can almost definitely put that ball in the back of the net and move forward and get this lead well it sounds good Luca and currently end of the first half Score two to two. And we will see you at the beginning of the second half. All right, and welcome back to Wayne Hills Patriot Stadium. Currently starting the second half. Wayne Hills taking on Fairlawn in this playoff matchup. Score currently is two to two. Tie match, but Hills brought it back in the last ten minutes to tie up this game and you know, one of the things that I want to see Hills do is that I want to see them come out and start out this game dominantly and hopefully able to put some early, maybe an early goal. But, Matt, what do you think Hills needs to do in well, order to get that early goal? Well, yeah, definitely without a doubt, I agree with you there. They have to come out, stay the same they were, if not better, and um, just keep doing what they're doing, as we said. More control and... Um, I just connecting on these passes and these shots. I mean, it's definitely there. All these attempts we've been seeing, shots on goal. We just need to see more shots in goal. Yeah, a lot of attempts here by Hills, but could definitely score a lot more than the two that they have currently. And Hills will start with the ball, so they'll have immediate possession. Hills immediately sending it away. Roll straight out of bounds. And we're going to start this game off with a throw in. Fairlawn running it down the middle of the field. Hills looking for an opportunity. One Hills player actually down, having a lot of trouble getting up. Definitely a great run there by the defender to chase the Fairlawn player out with the ball, directing it away from their goal. Yeah, very good job there by Hills. 
and by Fairlawn, but so far the counterattack is on. You know, Hill is actually this game playing with a little bit of a different formation. There are a lot of players that are either injured or out for this game. Samantha Graff still under concussion protocol. Definitely. A lot of players just it's a jumble up, not playing the other positions they've been or have to be switched around. So maybe we could even attribute that to almost a slip up there by Fairlawn. As I was talking, but Hills is going to get positioned back and sent out for a throw in. But, you know, a lot of Hills' early game struggles could have come down to just positional players being played well out of position. I mean, currently they have a goalkeeper in who is not a goalkeeper. They have Mercy Kachidi in at uh, center attacking midfielder when she usually pay, plays on the right side. So you have a lot of skilled positional players who are playing out of position. Definitely, and it's not you know your comfort zone when you're not doing what you normally do. And also to add a formation for the defense too, definitely playing out of a formation they aren't familiar with. Almost on shot there. Could have scored for only just a little bit more to the left. And a great attempt there. Almost able to make it. But usually Hill's playing in a diamond formation. This time they have a flatback formation. Almost chipped in. Makes it for the goal. Wow, look at that. He's just rolling right in too. Abigail Wellman on the goal and didn't really expect that to go in at all. But, I mean. The right place at the right time. More like, I mean, right place, right time. I mean, that's almost too convenient, if anything. <laughs> just give it a little bit of a tap and it'll just roll right in the goal. But Hills will. Come up to make their lead currently 3-2. 37 minutes, 7 seconds left already in the second half. And some great offensive play by Brooke Alexander. Tries to cross into the middle. Wellman just not able to get there in time. It looks like Hills will actually have a corner here. And so they just scored the goal for their most recent goal, and already they're in position to possibly score with a corner. Unfortunately, just goes out of bounds for a goal kick. Well, as we said, we, they need to keep this pressure up, and they are, and they have. They scored, and here we are. Well, I mean, this is one way to do it. It's one way to keep pressure consistent. Just to constantly attack. And, you know, we had that whole conversation about speeding up or slowing down, whether you slow down the pace of the game, make it more about passing or speed up the game, and just keep the speed going and just keeping the attack on. And it looks like they're keeping it what you said they would they should do, Matt, and just consistent attacking. Definitely, and control, too. And what I can add, too, personally, is because I've played soccer, I'd say... 13 or 14 years of my life and uh, playing just the other year with the boys team here one of my tactics my personal tactics is just you know have control but just be aggressive and be up in their faces because when you someone's constantly up in your face it's a little hard for you to concentrate wouldn't you say a little bit I would say <laughs> yes so just add that with control and hey if you're up in someone's face and you're getting them off edge and all you're, all you're doing is just staying up in their face uh, being aggressive and Attacking the ball, sooner or later you're going to score or just break away. Well, Hills has possession here in the center of the field. Aliota with the ball. Decent cross towards the middle, but gets picked up immediately by 
Fair long goalkeeper. Hills recovers yet again. Whistle goes off. Looks like it's going to be an offsides call on Brooke Alexander. Decent free kick, picked up immediately by Hills. And now it just, you know, to me it looks like now more of actually a slip up there by Fairlawn, and it's actually going to roll out off of contact with their own defender for a corner kick. But the one thing I was about to say is that with Hills, it looks like actually they're doing the best of both worlds. They're staying aggressive. But they're keeping it under control. And their passing has been, I mean, frankly, it's been excellent. And completely agree with you there. And as we've all been saying, it's just what they need to do. And they are doing it. Decent corner. Not able to get into the center of the group. The ball sent way far back in Hills' own territory. But Hills is able to put a stop to the counterattack. But Fairlawn does regain possession immediately switches back over to Hills and then switches back over to Fairlawn. You know, we talked about how these teams are so similar and, you know, now Hills has that sort of momentum, but, you know, that little portion right there shows that Fairlawn still is very willing to fight. And now it's Fairlawn looking for a breakaway. The ball rolls out of bounds for a Hills throw in. Hills takes the throw in. Whistle is blown. And it will be a Fairlawn free kick. It gets taken well. And it's actually going to result in a Fairlawn corner. So now it's Fairlawn's chance to even up the score. Flag fell down yet again, but let's see what Fairlawn is able to do here. Here's the corner. Send out of bounds. And it'll be a Hills goal kick. Unfortunately, the referee is not a Hills player. <laughs> no. Was trying to get the ball off quick there. Yeah, definitely tried, but a little too quick. Heavy tackle there by Fairlawn, but Hills still able to pick it up. Whistle goes out. Hills will get a free kick here. This could definitely set up a Hills breakaway, but let's see what's able to happen. Whistle is blown. Fairlawn will get the free kick. Currently 29 minutes, 40 seconds left on the clock. 
Hills is up by only a score. The score, of course, being only 3-2. to two. Hills in the lead. Hills looking for the breakaway. Roman just not able to get there. Gets wrapped up by the Fairlong goalkeeper. Ball will be sent out for a Fairlong throw in. Lassen just picking it up. Actually rolls out of bounds after making contact with the Fairlawn player, so it will be a goal kick. Here's the kick. So Hill's now on the counterattack, but it is going to get stopped by Fairlawn. So far, this ball has just gone back and forth repeatedly with both teams just trying to get a counterattack, but Hills is doing a good job here just trying to slow down the game at this point by the looks of it. Looks like Fairlawn's going to try to take some kind of advantage here. Well, definitely we can see Fairlawn is stepping up and not allowing Hills to stay in their territory anymore. And I think they've caught on. This is going to be blown on that tackle. It'll be a free kick for Hills. Brooke Alexander just kicking in the face of the defender. You know, at this point, I'm thinking of just asking our own editors who will be, of course, just cutting up the game a little bit, just wondering if they can possibly put a number up of how many times the ball has made contact with another player's face. <laughs> but who knows? Some excellent ball movement here by Hills. Yeah, some great passing so far. Ball's just going to roll straight out of bounds. But Fairlawn will have a goal kick. Hills retains possession through the goal kick. Decent pass down the right side, but Marissa Kachidi just unfortunately sends it out of bounds. And it'll be a fail on throw in. Hills has a breakaway here. Brooke Alexander looking for a goal. And makes the wrong type of goal. Well, I think that makes it even now, though. Three goals. Well, you know, if this was football, goals. you know, maybe the score would be 6-2. to two, But unfortunately, that's just not the rules of this game. No, not. Yet again, though, the Hills football team is always looking for submissions.
Hill's trying to get the breakaway down the middle. Fairlawn defender just not clearing it away. Brick Alexander gets a foot on it. Decent cross down the middle. And it's actually going to be a Fairlawn free kick. It's off the foul. Definitely want to add a lot of great passing here. Seen by Hill is just... Ooh. Hard tackle there by the Fairlawn player. Could take a shot. And yet again, just soaring over the actual goal, but yet again putting three more on the board for that invisible football game that is currently going on. Yes. I mean, it may be a close game here, but hey, if this were football... Hills is dominating. At this point, I would say, actually, well, they've missed two. But they have scored two. So well, the score would actually be 6-0. That would make it three. It would be 9-0, actually. 9-0, oh. Yes. I mean, even better for Hills, but just unfortunately, wow, two whiffs. Wow. By the Fairlawn defense. It's a little bit unfortunate that that's not the game we're playing. but yeah. <laughs> Unfortunate there for both those whiffs. Nobody in position. Completely open straight through the middle of their field. And again, another peg. More there contact. Could have an open shot here. Brooke Alexander tries to chip it away. Just not able to make it. And Fairlawn's on their counterattack. Marching all the way down the left side of the field. Gets stopped well by the Wayne Hills defense. And now they're on the counterattack. Some more action. Well, that's Brooke Alexander down the right side of the field looking for the cross. Weltman Get up. tries for it, just not been able to make it. How many tries there would we have to say? Yeah, and that's Courtney Root just not able to get a solid foot on the ball, but plenty on plenty of plenty of tries there. And counterattack after counterattack. Definitely. Well, if we have to give the most attempts, we'd have to give it to Hills. Fairlawn clears it away. Oh, man. Ball's actually going to roll out of bounds. Fairlawn has a throw in. Looked like a bit of miscommunication there. Not expecting the pass so quick. He was immediately playing aggressively. And another throw in for Fairlawn. And a substitution for Fairlawn. There's a throw in. Courtney Rue with a good cutoff there. Big jumble up in the midfield here. Yeah, but a great stop. And now it's just Marissa Kachidi passing it out to Brooke Alexander. Goes back to Kachidi. Now it's Aliota. Root yet again. And now it's back to Fairlawn's counterattack. Gets stopped yet again. But restarting here. And Hill's just able to pick it up. Stopping the counterattack. Needs to send it away. But step in. Ended up going out of bounds. It'll be a throw in. 
And now it's Fairlawn applying a lot of pressure here. Might be able to score if they can just set themselves up, themselves up in a pretty good position. Taken well by the Hills defender. Takes a shot. Picked up. Nice save. Nineteen minutes currently on the clock. Great pass. Brooke Alexander just looking to try to find a breakaway. Gets a nice pass out of Kachidi. But the shot is just wide left. A little bit more on the inside and it might have been goal. Well, as we've been saying all game, control was there, and as you could see it, just trying to find an opening, and there was just a little mist off to the side there. Well, now it'll be a fair long goal kick, but we've seen this ball go back and forth so many times at this point. Great pass set up for Weltman. little too much emphasis on that kick there. Yeah, just put maybe a little bit too much power on it. So it's flying out of bounds. Now Farallon has the th free throw. Sent flying out of bounds and position will go straight back to Hills. That's stepping on the free throw. And Fairlawn just fighting for control. Aliota with a nice tackle. Lassen sending it away. Gets cut off well. That's not a good pass. Gets intercepted by Root. And both of these teams are just fighting for possession. Both of them just looking for their one chance to attack. And it could be Fairlawn here. But Hill's just going to clear it. I just want to add this weather out here. I don't know how these players feel on the field running around, though. Maybe sweaty, but... Yeah, if anything, now you can feel that the wind is starting to pick up, going even faster now, so... Definitely cutting through my jackets too thin. <laughs> <laughs> Fairland had a pretty good throw in, but wasn't really able to capitalize on it. Courtney Root sends it away. Good pass to Kachidi. Dribbles it ahead just a little bit too far. And now it's Hills on offense, Farallon on defense, and then Farallon on offense, and Hills on defense, and it's just going back and forth. Just both teams trying to play for the solidified win. And, I mean, 15 seconds, 26 seconds left on the clock. I mean, either team could come down with it at this point. Either team could score. And Hills is up 3-2, to two, but that score could change at almost any second of this game. And it was around this time that Hills had that comeback. It was, but at the same time, it just makes me worry that... You know, these coaches definitely compared both teams to each other and that both teams were very alike. So it makes me wonder if Hills could come back. You know, if they drop for even a second, Fairlawn could come back just as hard. Now it's Brooke Alexander. Good cross. 
tries to score yet again. Keep tacking these field goals. <laughs> Even more points for this inv invisible football game, but... Currently Fairlawn looking for the goal kick. Very good setup. And I mean, I do want to give Hills credit. They're getting a lot of great setups here that could turn into goals, but just again and again, we've seen it pretty well that just when the time comes to score, they're just, for some reason, not able to put it in the back of the net consistently. Oh, well, there's no doubt about that being, you know, very good with their passing and possession. It's just the follow through, you know, the follow up. And, you know, even though they're winning, I understand that. Scores 3-2. to two. I just want to point that out because this is the playoffs. And, I mean, I mean, just that goal in general, or that potential goal in general, that was a very good setup. But just not able to convert it and turn it into a goal. And it's just things like that that make you wonder, well, why is that? Especially at this late stage in the season. But well, now Hills is trying to defend from the Fairlawn counterattack. Will be a free kick for Hills. Fairlawn immediately regains possession. But let's see what Hills can do here. And it's Lassen just picking it up yet again. And actually just check the weather. The wind is getting much faster. It is getting much colder. And that will definitely affect the trajectories at which the ball will be able to travel in, but... You didn't have to tell me the specifics, man. I'm freezing. <laughs> I think, trust me, we we all are at this point. And from the players on the field to up to us up in the booth, I think everybody's just a little bit cold. <laughs> no doubt about that. Now it's Brooke Alexander on the breakaway. Takes a shot right off the side crossbar. Beautiful shot, just straight back at him. And another shot, and that's just the unlucky bounce. That's almost a perfect shot. You couldn't ask for better. Straight past the goalkeeper and just the unlucky bounce sends it straight away on to the opposite direction. Hey, if you were asking me, I'd blame it on the wind there. Honestly, at this point, I think you'd blame everything on the wind. <laughs> Without a doubt. Some nice skill play there. Potential for an opposite side goal. But an excellent job by the backup goalkeeper. But Fairlawn immediately on the counterattack. Sends it down towards the middle. Huge potential for a goal. Tries to take the shot. Had an open player down the right side. Could have sent it away. Would have absolutely have been a goal, but just takes an unfortunate slip. And Brooke Alexander is now on the right side. Has some open field for a cross. Takes the cross. Sent away by Fairlawn. And Aliolda immediately sends it back. And it's just going back and forth. Both these teams are playing equally as aggressive. Well, that's how it's been this whole game. And now, 10 minutes on the clock. And let's see what Hills can do here. All they need to do is just make sure that Fairlawn isn't able to score. But Fairlawn has had a lot of opportunities so far. 
Carolina sends it out of bounds for a Hills throw in. Immediately taken by Brooke Alexander. Aliota. Sent out of bounds. Hills with the throw in. And a very nice throw in here for Fairlawn. If only they were able to make it, that could have easily have turned into a counterattack opportunity. Now it's Fairlawn with the throw in. Immediately cleared by Aliota. Another throw in picked up by Lassen. Sent out of bounds. Fairlawn three, free throw. Here's the throw. Another cross. And that's more points for the invisible football game. <laughs> Fairlawn coming back in this football game too. Eh, putting some points up on the board. Good goal kick. Eliota with the ball. Unfortunately, sent out of bounds. Fairlawn th free throw. Cleared by Hills. And on the, clear, on the clear, that was actually number 18, I believe, Kira Blakesley. A very good throw in. Pretty sure the wind had something to do with that, but Hills is able to clear it away. Six minutes, 45 seconds left. Hills is up, three to two. Some great passing across this field, switching it up. Yeah, now it's Brooke Alexander. Tries to take a cross and able to muscle the defender off the ball and sends it back to Kachidi. Very good position. Sends it across. And just not being cleared at all. Brooke Ooh. takes it, just nearly misses. Just wide of the field goal on that one. Yeah, almost a little bit. A couple more points for the invisible football game, but... The wind strikes again. Of course. Ball rolls out of bounds on the goal kick. And now it's Fairlawn, had a chance, but a very good tackle there by Hills. In my view, I thought she'd just fallen. That's, I thought she got turned around too quick and fell over on feet, but. Well, now this is gonna be very dangerous for Hills. They've got a free kick. Definitely. Currently set up on the 29 yard line. This is pretty bad for Hills, especially with the way that the wind is blowing, calling everybody back. But sails straight out of bounds. That was very close. Very. I. That was going dead on for that upper 90. 
just a little bit lower. It probably would have been a goal too. As I would add again, the wind. Exactly. The wind is affecting everything today. Now Hills with the breakaway. Ball is just going to be cleared away. It's going back and forth. Fairlawn could have a good position here, but just not able to get to it. And Hill's just able to clear it. And quite an impressive and long throw. Yeah, really, and it's just like you say, the wind is causing everything today. Whether it be in favor or not, it's, it's present. Now it's Brooke Alexander sending it up the middle to Weltman. Three minutes on the clock. And so at this point, Hills just needs to play some very solid defense. Just needs to make sure that the ball always goes in their favor. And it will be a goal kick. And that's almost exactly what they could be hoping for at this point. Well, I mean, how it's looking is if Fairlawn scores, we're looking to go into overtime, possibly, if there isn't a quick response by Hills. But if not, Hills either to keep it with some defense or add another to secure the victory. And I mean, Hills has been playing some pretty good defense so far. So, I mean... Let's not jinx nothing yet. <laughs> well, that's the reason I added in the so far, so. All right. Well, just to be sure, let me knock on wood. <laughs> but Fairlong currently with possession. Sent away by Hills. And Wellman actually able to get it away. And now the Hills counterattack is on. And Kachidi sends it out of bounds, but that actually is very good for Hills. They wasted a lot of time. Only a minute, 22 seconds left. Some great play and a great quick turnaround there. And honestly... At this point, the best defense may actually to be to keep it on Fairlawn's side of the field. And it's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's some more points for the Invisible Football game, but currently, Hills is up 3-2. to two. 46 seconds left. Fairlawn needs to get possession back, and they need to send it straight down the field. And Fairlawn's number nine, actually their fastest player on their team by the looks of it. It will be sent out of bounds. Very relentless player there. Yeah, but 25 seconds left on the clock with a Hills throw in. At this point, you just need to make sure the ball does not end up going for a breakaway. Strong header coming in there. Ten seconds out. left. Ball is sent slowly away. That's probably the worst thing that could happen. And the game is actually going to end. The score, three to two. Hills takes the win. And so looking back at the game, Fairlawn went up two to nothing. End of the first half. Hills came back.
to tie the game up 2-2 two to two, and then scores early in the second half to secure the win. Well, I mean, if there's anything to add, it was a team effort, and boy, did you see it come together. And if any of us were to pick players, I mean, for me, as I had mentioned earlier, Natalia Aliota basically controlling the midfield and with her aggressiveness, her speed and her skills, you could see, and the mindset for teamwork and the, just the way she played and overall how she posi uh, positioned herself and positioned others for passing. I mean, it was a team effort and as we saw in the end, a win. Yeah, Luca, what do you think? Well, I think this Hills team, they take team to another level. It's not a bunch of individuals gathered together trying to achieve one goal. It's individuals set to work as one whole unit, keeping that control and staying out on that field, being able to do what they do best as a whole, and being able to take this win, very important for them. Well, that'll wrap it up here at Patriot Stadium. The score, 3-2. to two. Great game played by Hills. Farallon, unfortunately, coming out as the losers, but Hills will move on. And I am Dylan Orn King, joined here by Matthew Cassidy, Luca Yanuzzi, and we will see you next time.